The big picture is back on The Escapist, and yes, that means Schlocktober is back on The Escapist. Yes, the yearly tradition in which my desire to do as much of my fall work in advance as possible translates to a full month of Halloween-themed movies are weird episodes for you, plus these delightful pumpkins, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, what, is that not enough? The show didn't even exist anymore a month ago. Anyway, since I'm so glad to be back home, I figured we could do a whole month of episodes about home. Kind of. A little. Three are definitely about home, one is home-themed, and the fifth one, honestly, a bit of a stretch. Look, it only occurred to me that this was a unifying theme like an hour before recording this, so yeah. Anyway, this is Troll. Okay, so these days, 1986's Troll is mainly known as the movie that the infamously rediscovered cult classic bad movie Troll 2 was an in-name-only unofficial retitled sequel to, which kind of sucks even if I wasn't really sick of the hipster Johnny-come-lately cool kid cult obsession that sprung up around Troll 2. Yeah, it's a memorably bad movie, but its legend has obscured the fact that the original Troll is actually, if not a good movie, a fun, unique, nothing-if-not-ambitious B-movie that deserves to be better known in its own right. Shut that damn door! I don't know, but I'm listening to that tree. Directed by special effects makeup artist and horror biz mainstay John Carl Beekler. Yes, that's how you pronounce it. I had to look it up too. It was a production of B-movie legend Charles Band's Empire International Pictures, the precursor to Full Moon. And if any of those names are familiar to you, you know what to expect from Troll. A simple, spooky, central concept with exactly enough resources to pull off on a budget that instead blows out into wild tangents of extra characters, big idea subplots, and needlessly elaborate internal mythology, i.e. the way Puppet Master goes from evil marionettes to actually they're the good guys and fought Hitler, and plus ancient Egyptian demon gods are involved, and also there were bad Nazi puppets. Anyway, Troll features an average all-American family moving into an apartment complex in San Francisco with colorful neighbors including a psychotic ex-soldier, Sonny Bono, no, for real, as basically Glenn Quagmire, Well, babe, was it what you expected? Unfortunately. What? A young Julia Louis Dreyfus pre Seinfeld, yeah, Phil Fondacaro as a professor, and June Lockhart, the mom from Lassie and Lost in Space. Oh, and also, there's a troll. <laughs> Okay, so it's a, hey, our new place is haunted movie, but instead of ghosts, there's a little monster guy and he's gonna kill people. Okay, that's easy enough, but then the troll abducts the family's younger daughter and takes her form, so it's a haunting movie and a small monster movie and also a possession movie and also kind of the bad seed too? That's a bit much. What does death look like? I don't know. It looks something like this. <laughs> Oh yeah, also the troll isn't so much killing people as he is turning them into cocoons to be reborn as elves, goblins, fairies, sprites, and other fantasy creatures like himself, which also transforms the various apartments one by one into fairy tale realms, or doorways to the same. Eventually, June Lockhart reveals that she's a witch and explains what the hell's been going on. There were fairies and there were humans. No one side would rule the other, that the kingdoms would be equally divided between the two of them. But that didn't set well with Torok and some of the fairies. They wanted to control the world, so there was a great big war, and the rebel fairies were condemned to darkness. And Torak was turned into a troll. Yeah. And that's why you're here? To stop him? That's my job, kiddo. He's transforming sections of this building into different fairy worlds. And when he has succeeded in transforming them all, a single fairy universe will be formed within this building. It'll be filled with all his old fairy pals. And when that's done, that universe will burst forth like a fourth dimension. Torok has just three days in which to complete his universe. Plunge this weapon deep into the heart of Torok's universe. Yeah, that's... That's a lot for a There's a Monster in the Cellar movie. Oh, also, the main kid here is Noah Hathaway, a.k.a. Atreyu from The NeverEnding Story, and his character is named Harry Potter Jr. My name's Harry Potter Jr. I just moved into this building. And you'd better believe that the rights holders of the Troll franchise have tried several times to launch spin-off projects based on the fact that they have documented rights to call a character Harry Potter Jr. Anyway, because in real life June Lockhart had to unexpectedly depart the production for no particularly good story reason, the witch makes herself younger so she can be played by Miss Lockhart's real-life daughter Anne, and she and Harry can use magic to battle the Troll and his minions. Harry Potter Jr. Harry Potter Jr. Harry Potter Oh! <laughs> 
and because at this point, Troll has added so much extra stuff that it's not even really about the troll anymore, our ending involves Lockhart being turned into a tree. Eunice, no! Go on. Get in there and save your sister. And Hathaway fighting a previously unseen giant ogre thing in the fairy world to rescue his sister. Whoa! Oh god! Yeah, this is a weird one. Troll Stands is a pretty good example of how and why Charles Band and Empire left theatrical distribution and instead conquered the world of direct-to-video with Full Moon. It's kinda hard to pin down who this was supposed to be for, even assuming there was much of an audience for the advertised horror comedy about a killer troll concept, that actual movie turns out to be more of a kid's film about helping good witches fight evil creatures. <laughs> fairy kingdoms and all this mythology, but then it's got just enough adult content to not be for kids. <laughs> Feel like breakfast? Sure. There's some pancake mix in the kitchen. Then in the middle of it, there's these idiosyncratic why is this in this movie moments, like some not unexpected randomness from the great Michael Moriarty. <laughs> ever-and-appreciated Phil Fondacaro, who incidentally is playing both this character and he's in the troll costume, doing his really heartfelt, personal-feeling scene right in the middle of all of this, well, all of this. My parents told me, Malcolm, just not gonna grow anymore. I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if all this was happening to me because I was magic? And not because I was sick. I used to sit in my bedroom and daydream. I wish that I'd wake up the next morning in a land filled with unicorns and dragons and flying horses. Still, Troll is nothing if not unique, and you certainly get a lot for whatever you pay for it. It's pretty easy to find around these days, and even got a big Blu-ray printing as part of the Empire Pictures box set a few years back, coinciding with the documentary on the studio's history, Celluloid Wizards in the Video Wasteland. Your mileage may vary, but I live for this sort of thing. It's starting again. Which, of course, is why we're doing it for the whole month. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture. Okay, yeah. Hey guys, this is uh, me, Bob, here at one of our uh, current work locations, where, among other things, currently at work on uh, new episodes of The Big Picture, and uh, since it's almost October, working on this year's Schlocktober. This intro should be appearing in front of re-released episodes of classic Schlocktober, uh, I believe the 2018 season. Uh, either season 9 or 10, uh, was previously available as uh, a compilation. Uh, going back through the uh, playlists, realized that this season, which uh, was one of the last or next to last ones that was on the second volume of Escapist episodes, was in the compilations, uh, was not re-uploaded as part of Big Picture Classic previously, so we're rectifying that. The compilation episodes, very good for my traffic numbers, thank you very much. Not necessarily great, I realize, for people, fans, viewers, who are just looking to watch one episode or link to one episode. Use an example, say, hey, here's this one episode where a movie was talked about, check this out. So, uh, fixing the fact that these specific four or five episodes were not in single form on the channel, getting up. I recognize that not everyone is the biggest fan of the regular, semi-regular re-uploads of not previously available or not previously remastered material. 
I understand. I also hope that fans and viewers can understand our perspective, that we need to get as much of the original material up on the channel as possible, because otherwise it's sitting on some other channel where someone else is getting ad revenue off of something that I did, that we produced, that we now own, that should be coming back to us. And speaking as someone who's had to go out and, and basically hunt down old uploads of my own material to get back, I want to have as much of my stuff in one place as I can. The lineup for Schlocktober this year, I'm not gonna reveal ahead of time because we generally don't reveal ahead of time. I'm very proud of what we're working on this year and I'm very proud of a cool announcement that I'm planning to make at the uh, towards the end of Schlocktober this year that I think people are gonna be very happy about. Continuing to push to get more new material out, get more reviews up. Like I said, we've uh, been still producing the show out of this location, other locations, trying to get this whole operation back up on its feet. Thank you from the bottom of my heart again to everyone who supports the Patreon who shares the Patreon with their friends, continues to watch this content. I know that many of us are rebuilding things that fell apart during the whole plague situation. It's been tough. So to everyone who is still helping us get this out and helping me put really my life back together, thank you so much. Schlocktober is coming. Until then, I'm going to try and get uh, these uh, remastered 2018 episodes up at least once a week in September while getting other content out. Looking forward to it. I love autumn. Love this time of year. And thank you all so much.